Hi, my name is Chris. I'm a highly opinionated human being that likes to share everything I think when I see a pitch deck for the first time that I probably would never tell the founder that I'm considering, you know, investing in. Um, the goal of this is to help people understand where credibility is won and lost in a pitch deck when you send it out for a potential introduction to an investor with me or people like me being said investor. So I don't know anything about this pitch deck, don't know anything about the company. Let's have a go. Right. Reservey, uh, a digital booking platform for the beauty and wellness industry in Colombia, Rocket Internet Inspired. Ha. Huh. That is 90% of their pitch. I don't really need to see much in this deck if I've understood that sentence correctly. What it basically means is Rocket Internet are famous for taking things that exist in one market and copying it into another market before that company gets to enter that market. It's so successful, Rocket Internet were hated for it. I thought it was fucking genius. Anyway, um, classic stuff. So they're basically saying a digital booking platform for the beauty and wellness industry, which of course is all over the UK and the US and all over Europe. Um, clearly not in Colombia if this statement is true and they're just gonna copy and paste. Good for them. So what do I care about? What do I really care about then? I don't really care about the pitch because <laughs> they've done it. Um, what I care about is, do have they done any form of, have they got it into the market in any way, shape or form? Does it exist? Because there's obviously no real tech barrier because you can just literally use off the shelf tech to build this. You know, it's fairly straightforward. <laughs> there's loads of them out there, you know, all the way from charge B through to like tutti for crying out loud. Like there are loads of things that can do this. Um, so this is a business um, problem. It's a market penetration problem, not a technology problem. So I need to see that they are capable of getting into that market and that they can run successful businesses in that market. That's what I care about. So what have they done in the market? Have they proven they can get in the market? What is their background? And what do they need money money for? Excuse me. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Uh, I like Canva. Uh, ugly. Problems. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, they use the phone. Cool. Uh, a platform. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a website and there's a mobile app. Oh, they looks like they use WhatsApp. Cool, like everyone else. Uh, nope. Not going to explore your prototype. Ah, team. Oh, uh, SA. Um, Colombian Heritage. Cool. Award-winning artist, designer, and technologist. What awards? I can say I'm, I'm an I'm a I'm an award winning turd polisher. Like, so, like, don't make statements or opinions of yourself. Don't make statements which are actually opinions of yourself. State facts about yourself. Award winning. Like, this is not to denigrate Mert in any way, shape, or form. This is like this is a point I'm trying to get across to all founders. Don't make opinions of yourself. State facts about what you've done in the past. Um, 15 years, first hand Okay, okay, but what does that mean? What, what happened? Um, MSC in digital and social media marketing. Doesn't mean anything in, nowadays, sorry mate. You know, marketing changes like in an instant, by the time you learned that is irrelevant. Um, there's nothing here that makes me go, wow, this is the team, other than the fact that Jonathan is Colombian. Or has Colombian heritage. Um, market opportunity. Can I? Well, basically, what I really want to know is, can I get my money back? Or even more than that, like Sam Altman is now my superhero, even though he has been for some time, but more recently is becoming more vocal and sharing his kind of rather controversial opinions about how people should, in his view, build companies, and they align very much to my views. Um, but he constantly preaches about the power law. You know, one investment needs to repay all of your prior investments. Um, and you do not make a decision on an investment unless that's plausible, even if the failure rate is like 99%. So can I get my money back? Let's just say I put in, well, I don't even know how much they're asking. Let's just say I put in 100 grand. Can I get from that 100 grand, I don't know, 5 million pounds back? Um, this doesn't tell me this. So the monthly revenue, I assume that's there's 98 million pounds spent in salons every year in Colombia. You know, we're talking about, you know, a billion. Is that right? 
100 million pounds times 12. 12. It's a billion. My brain's not working. Okay, a billion pounds a year spent in salons. It's not a huge market, but if you dominate it, mm -hmm. let's say you take a 2 to 5% transaction fee. We're talking, you know, you can make a you can make a 50 million pound company out of this, probably. Probably. 50 million pounds? That's if you own all the market. If I give 100k and I own like 2%, maybe 1%. Probably can't get my money back. Hmm, we'll see. Uh, market research. Uh, all right, cool. This is helpful for you to make a product. It's not helpful for me to consider an investment. 124 surveys, don't care. Uh, uh, I like this kind of competitive analysis, but this looks hideous. Um, affordable. So you are trying to make your service affordable and with comprehensive support. You're basically saying these things are not affordable and that they don't offer support. Now, I might challenge that. You know, I prefer competitive analyses where each quadrant essentially is a positive thing. You're just choosing to be amazing at the things that the other people have chosen not to be amazing at so you can pull yourself away from the competition. Whereas this still suffers from that whole like product grid thing that I fucking hate which basically says all of our competitors are stupid. They don't know how to make something affordable and they don't know how to support people. It's like, they probably do. They just don't do it the way you plan to do it. Or you, they probably plan to do it the way you didn't realize that you can't do it. So this, I mean, it's fine, but it's, it's not great. Competitive now. Again. What? Is that the same slide? I don't fucking know. Anyway. Uh, how many? Don't care. Strategy, don't care. Um, I just care if you've done something. Okay, July 23. Excellent, past tense. Jan 24. Costs revenue. Oh, revenue is still zero. Okay, all right. So your costs have gone up. Your balance is going down. So we're seeing a crossover in like between 25 and 26. So in a year and a half, two years. Um... So you haven't done anything. Ah, uh, financial baseline, break even point. Okay, you haven't you haven't started. This is just an idea. This is just an idea. Nothing wrong with raising money on an idea. You've just got to be the fucking best at oh, I skip that. You've just got to be the best at that idea. Um forty K on tech. Yeah, it makes sense. You're just copying a load of shit. Launch phase. So three hundred K to get to profitability. Oh no, hundred and sixteen on dev. Sixty K marketing, thirty K on sales, operations, IT infrastructure. So what are you doing? Are you just like hiring consultants to do this for you? What's what are you actually building? Um, timeline. Where are we at? User experience. Okay, you've done all of this stuff. Should exist. Okay, well there was a link to a prototype, I guess. In fairness, so you know, I shouldn't complain. I did skip it. Ninety-seven percent untapped market. I challenge that indulgence. Um, truthfully. It's fine. It's fine. Would I? No. And the reason, there's two reasons. One, the rocket internet thing, I do like actually. I do like the copy and pasting one business from one place to the next. But this just feels too small. It just it just feels a bit too small. Um, it feels too small, so I don't feel I'm ever going to get the power law return, which I need for my investment thesis. Um, so it's not going to be for me. I probably, rep I would reply. I would say, hey, it's not a fit for me. Good luck. Let me know if anything changes. It's probably how I'd reply. But the other reason I wouldn't reply is because it doesn't look like you've actually done anything. Looks like they've built some prototype type stuff, but this isn't a tech problem. This is a business problem. This is a market penetration problem, not a tech problem. So compared to most things that I see, this is not a tech company. It is a marketing company. So show me you've done something there. Show me, a, I don't know, show me you've done some sales by hand. I don't fucking care. Show me something. Um, and because I don't see any of that, it's not for me. Enjoy!